does sedentary mean? asked Wilbur. It means that I'm, I sit still a good part of the time. I don't go wandering all over creation. I know a good thing when I see it, and my web is a good thing. I stay put and wait for what comes. It gives me a chance to think. Well, I'm sort of sedentary myself, I guess, said the pig. I mean, I have to hang around here, whether I want to or not. You know where I'd really like to be this evening? Where? In a forest, looking for beech nuts and truffles and delectable roots and pushing leaves aside with my wonderful nose, searching and sniffing along the ground, smelling and smelling. You smell just the way you are, remarked a lamb who had just walked in. I can smell you from over here. You're the smelliest creature in this place. Wilbur hung his head. His eyes now grew wet with tears. Charlotte noticed his embarrassment, and she spoke. She spoke sharply to the lamb. Let Wilbur alone, she said. He has a perfect right to smell, considering his surroundings. You're no bundle of sweet peas yourself. And furthermore, you are interrupting our very pleasant conversation. Now, Wilbur, what were we talking about when we were so rudely interrupted? Oh, I don't remember, said Wilbur. It doesn't really make any difference. Let's not talk anymore for a while, Charlotte. I think I'm getting sleepy. You go ahead and finish fixing your web, and I'll just lie here and watch you. It's a lovely evening. Wilbur stretched out on his side. Twilight settled over Zuckerman's barn and a feeling of peace. Fern knew it was almost supper time, but she couldn't bear to leave. Swallows passed on silent wings, in and out of the doorways, bringing food to their young ones. And from across the road, a bird sang, Whippoorwill, Whippoorwill. Lurvy sat down under an apple tree and lit his pipe. And the animals sniffed the familiar smell of the strong tobacco. Wilbur heard the trill of the tree toad and the occasional slamming of the kitchen door. And all these sounds made him feel so comfortable and happy. For he loved life and loved to be a part of the world on a summer evening. But as he lay there, he remembered what the old sheep had told him. The thought of death came to him, and then he began to tremble with fear. Charlotte, he said softly. Yes, Wilbur. I don't want to die. Oh, of course you don't, said Charlotte in a comforting voice. I mean, I just love it here in the barn, said Wilbur. I love everything about this place. <laughs> of course you do, said Charlotte. We all do. The goose appeared followed by her seven goslings. They thrust their little necks out and they kept up a musical whistling like a tiny little troop of pipers. Wilbur listened to the sound with all love in his heart. Charlotte, he said. Yes, said the spider. Were you serious when you promised that you would keep them from killing me? Oh, I was never more serious in my life. I'm not going to let you die. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not going to let you die, Wilbur. But how are you going to save me? asked Wilbur, whose curiosity was very strong on this point. Well, said Charlotte vaguely, I don't really know, but I'm working on a plan. Mm, that's wonderful, said Wilbur. How's the plan coming? Have you, have you got very far with it? I mean, is it coming along pretty well? Wilbur was trembling again, but Charlotte was cool and collected. Oh, it's coming all right, <laughs> she said lightly. The plan is still in its early stages, and it hasn't been completely shaped up yet, but I I I'm working on it. Well, when do you work on it, begged Wilbur. <laughs> you know, when I'm hanging head down at the top of my web, that's when I do all of my thinking, because then all the blood is in my head. Oh, well, I I'd be only too glad to help out in any way that I can. Oh, I'll work it out alone, said Charlotte. I, I can think better if I think alone. All right, but don't fail to let me know if there's anything that I, you know, can do to help you, no matter how slight. Well, replied Charlotte, you must try to build yourself up. I want you to get plenty of sleep and stop your worrying. Never hurry and never worry. Chew your food thoroughly and eat every bit of it, except when you must leave just a little bit for Templeton. Gain weight, stay well, and that's the way you can help. You keep fit and you don't lose your nerve. Do you think you understand? Oh. Yes, I, I, I understand, said Wilbur. Now you go along to bed, said Charlotte. Sleep is important. So Wilbur trotted over to the darkest corner of his pen and he threw himself down. He closed his eyes. In another minute, he spoke. Charlotte, he said. <laughs> yes, Wilbur. May I go out to my trough and see if I left any of my supper? I think I, I, think I left just a little tiny bit of mashed potato. <laughs> 
Very well, said Charlotte, but I want you in bed again without delay. Wilbur started to race out to his yard. Slowly, slowly, said Charlotte, never hurry, never worry. Wilbur checked himself and he crept slowly to his trough. He found a little bit of potato and chewed it carefully and swallowed it and walked back to his bed. He closed his eyes and he was silent for a while. Charlotte, he said in a whisper. Yes? May, may I get a drink of milk? I, I think there are a few drops of milk left in my trough. Hmm. No, the trough is dry and I want you to go to sleep now. No more talking. Close your eyes and go to sleep. Wilbur shut his eyes. Fern got up from her stool and she started for home, her mind full of everything that she had seen and heard. <sighs> Good night, Charlotte, said Wilbur. Good night, Wilbur. There was pause. Good night, Charlotte. <laughs> Good night, Wilbur. Good night. Good night. <laughs>